was the best feeling in the world, the way that he introduced me. Good afternoon. Uh, good to see everyone. First, uh, and to get us most, real quick. As you know, um, um, today, Reverend Tammy Garrett Williams from Transform Ministries, as well as the Above Waters Project, are going to be talking to us about her work tied to community corrections. I believe the bulk of that introduction, as well as what she does to herself, I will tell you she's written an amazing book um, called Invisible Hand Tops. It actually made me feel very, very excited and wonderful that a college would take the time to actually get involved with my book. I am so lucky to have an inscribed copy that chronicles the community corrections process um, for women in the state of Colorado. And again, I will leave that discussion to her, but um, we are unbelievably um, grateful that she took the time out of her busy schedule trying to work to facilitate social justice in our community to share her I work really felt community. excited that they were so engaged by the conversation that we were having over community corrections as well as the game that they got involved with called Community Quest. They were learning things about um, community correction from the 1700s all the way to 2014. That was exciting to me. So I'm going to leave you with that because I'm going to come back with something. I've got this game. There are, we've got 26, seven people here. If we can break out in probably a group of six. Joshua, one, two, three, four, five, six. Pinpoint a lot of the data uh, along with that. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. Passive aggressive. And what was really, really exciting to me is the fact that they actually uh, wanted to know more in regards well, to the English honors probably the key for that question. But first I have to go back to the time before I became incarcerated. I was actually a business owner and doing quite well at it. And and then when my incarceration happened, I ended up going into prison and from there I went into community correction. At that point in community correction I thought I was going to be able to go back to what I was doing and regain my confidence and regain my way of living. But unfortunately, that didn't happen in community correction. I found that there were so many barriers within community corrections as they were wanting me to go out and get these $7.80 jobs, which still keeps you in poverty, then turn around and have to pay their rent, which still keeps you in poverty. I never saw a way that I could really get out of the grasp of community corrections. Money, some of us don't have jobs, which is a threat. We could be sent back to prison because we can't find a job, but then we can't find a job because we're a felon, and we can't find a job because we're a felon. And sometimes there's another issue, and I hate to bring that up, it's because of race. That often happens with other offenders that come through that particular entity. And what needs to happen is change has to happen so that we be able to help each individual that is within community correction be more successful and come out and do possibly what I'm doing because what I'm doing is going back and educating and making people understand what this particular entity is all about and at the same time I'm also trying to help community correction change for the better not saying that they're absolutely in the wrong but there are some wrong things going on that needs to be changed okay so for me, a black woman, I already got three strikes. I'm over 25, definitely. I have a felony in the color of my skin, even though I can't. And that degrees. is what our mission and what my mission and my life is all about, is about change in the justice system for the better. Being that I am now an ordained minister, I am an advocate and business owner once again but for more of what my passion is, and that's the passion for the people. When I was telling my bio, it was such a painful thing to do. It was, the journey itself was painful by the things that happened to me that placed me in now the system of mass incarceration. That's why I do what I'm doing. I carry two college degrees. That's personal. Ask me about Sandra. She is a phenomenal friend. I've known her for over 10 years. She actually was the person that sat with me 
throughout my whole trial and could not believe that something of this magnitude could happen to her best friend. Um, Sandy is actually the person I paroled to because I believe that without her, I may have paroled homeless. She helped me get back on my feet. She's actually the treasurer of Above Waters Project because I have that much trust in someone that supported me throughout this whole ordeal from the time that I entered into the Denver County Jail to the time I entered into community correction. She was the support system that I feel I needed. And I think God sent her as an angel to rescue me and to help me because this is now where I am in a better place and I am still healing from those processes and she's still there even through my healing yeah, process. Awesome. 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 That person is actually what we call a sponsor. She's actually my best friend for 10 years. When I was going through this case, she su supported me um, in so many different levels because she knew, that, well, it just goes a little deeper than that. So um, she's someone that I actually paroled to, meaning I live there. I live in Golden, Colorado. Um, and she's been the best support that I can ever, ever, ever mention. And uh, I love her. Right there. 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 Right there.